What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. We've all got our own favorite Pokémon, and it can be a bit of a letdown when we find out that they didn't make the cut into the next games, but that's expected, right? I mean, no Pokémon can make it into every single game after their debut, or can they? As difficult as it seems, there are indeed some Pokémon out there that have perfect attendance in all of the mainline games after their introduction, and it may not be the ones that you expect. So let's comb through the hundreds and hundreds of Pokémon to see which ones are the most devoted to serving their trainers. Or rather, which ones the development teams are most devoted to keeping in the popular eye. Now, there are a few bottlenecks in the Pokémon franchise over the years that should be brought up, and we should probably iron out the rules. So firstly, I will be counting remakes, you might not think that's fair, but they are still the mainline games, and the first bottleneck is likely why, since the great gulf between Gens 2 and 3 led to half of the Pokémon being in Ruby and Sapphire, and half being in Fire Red and Leaf Green. So it's not exactly fair to discount the first Kanto remakes, when that's the only way some Pokémon could get into Gen 3 at all. That being said, I will be excluding the Let's Go games because that would make the whole video pointless, as it purposefully leaves out everything that wasn't an original Kanto Pokémon. Well, except for the ones that weren't in any other mainline games, and no, Go does not count. However, I will be counting a Pokémon if it's in one of the versions, because it wouldn't really make sense to say that Electabuzz isn't in Gen 1, because it is, just not in Blue version. Although if they didn't make the cut for the third version, then I am inclined to cross them off as well. If Emerald didn't respect Meditite enough to keep it around in its own region, then it can't be on the list. Sorry, little guy. But I will be counting pretty much any form of obtaining a Pokémon in either version, whether that be wild captures, breeding, gifting eggs, or in-game trades, pretty much anything that would let you get a Pokémon without needing an exterior force. So that leads us back to the bottlenecks. There are other major events that severely nearly culled this list short, including Black and White, since the Unova region started fresh with very few past Pokémon in the post-game, and yes, that includes leaving out franchise mascot Pikachu. The face of the series did not make it into Black and White, so it is shockingly disqualified. So then, which other Pokémon could beat out the mighty Pikachu? Well, I feel that leads to the final bottleneck, that being the Dexit controversy from Generation 8. As we know, this was the decision to not allow certain Pokémon to be carried forward into the most recent games, and if you couldn't even bring in the old ones because their model wasn't programmed in, that definitely means that they aren't going to be there every time. However, I will be counting the DLCs in tandem with their respective games, since it's impossible to play the Isle of Armor or Indigo Disc without a copy of the base game first. Maybe you don't agree, but these are the terms that I'm working with. So then, which Pokémon would meet these criteria and actually be found in every mainline game? After their introduction, of course, because you can't go back and find a Grookey in Heart Gold version. And maybe that's a good place to start, because only being one generation old, you might think that the Galar Pokémon would mostly be covered on the list and join the club, especially seeing their starters at the Blueberry Academy. But since we are counting remakes, none of them made a capturable appearance in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, meaning that no Galar Pokémon have perfect attendance. Or Legends Arceus for that matter, which I will be taking into account because unlike the Let's Go games, it actually included Pokémon outside the initial Sinnoh decks, even introducing some brand new ones. Which does lead me to talk about them, actually. Because they were in the last possible games in Gen 8, they then make the cut by virtue of being in Scarlet, Violet, or the DLC. However, it was not all of the new additions in Legends Arceus that made it in, only Cleavor, Pasky Legion, Overquill, and Ursaluna. Granted, that is a different form of Ursaluna, but that still means that it's in all of the games since its debut. That leaves out Weirdeer, Sneasler, and Enamorous from the Hisui crowd, and sure, only surviving one game longer or to the DLC of that game doesn't sound all that impressive, but you've gotta realize that Scarlet and Violet actually cut off a lot of other Pokémon that had been constant mainstays like Zubat. That being said, it's pretty hard to find other Pokémon that show up in some way for each of the iterations of the main series, but before we get to some that you might expect, I have a surprise for you, Happini. This unassuming baby Pokémon has the distinction above any other of being included across all of the games since Gen 4. Not even Munchlax or Riolu could do that, which makes it all the more shocking. I guess Chansey was more important than I thought. 
Although it is worth noting that Chansey was not found in Ruby and Sapphire, but sometimes Happiny is only found by breeding a Chansey, like in X and Y. But there is a whole shop devoted to the different kinds of incense, so they do expect you to do that. And in Black and White 2, you are gifted an egg to hatch with Happiny in it, whereas the first Black and White were almost our undoing if it weren't for the White Forest. Frankly, the White Forest saved a bunch of these Pokémon that would otherwise have skipped the first Unova games, but Happiny can be found there, which is a lifeline from the original Diamond and Pearl all the way to the modern Switch titles. That's pretty impressive for the little Playhouse Pokémon when the outside media exposure doesn't really seem to reflect its constant presence. But I guess maybe that's what being Nurse Joy's sidekick will get you, leaving Happiny to shatter expectations across the board. However, Gen 4 doesn't stop there because there were a plethora of new evolutions at the end of the decks. And while their evolutions may have been cut off, these other Pokémon had less runway ahead of them, like how Electivire seems to constantly be showing off how cool it is. You might argue that it shouldn't count at all because it wasn't even originally in the Sinnoh Regional decks, but it's there in the game, you just gotta go find it. Electivire is exclusive to some versions and isn't in Let's Go, but the same holds true for Magmortar, who sticks by its rival across every major entry after Gen 4. No wonder those items always keep showing up in every single game. Even Leafeon and Glaceon couldn't match the constant rocks appearing when Eevee goes missing for a game or two so it can't use them, unlike Electabuzz or Magmar. But believe it or not, the rest of the list, as far as I could find, are Gen 1 Pokémon. That's truly a testament of endurance to last from the very beginning and never miss a step. And it'll be no surprise that the first one is Magikarp. This floppy fish is notoriously weak, so maybe that's why they're comfortable in allowing it to pop up everywhere, but no matter where you are, you can pretty much guarantee that you'll catch a Magikarp on the line. Except for Unova, but you can still buy one from the salesman for $500. Ordinarily, that would be a ripoff, but when that's the only way to get a Pokémon that you can't otherwise catch, 500 is a steal. Obviously, Magikarp also made it into Legends Arceus when other Pokémon that would have made the cut were left out. So that's why I'm counting Legends in the running, because it is not impossible to do. Also, Gyarados always being there helps out a lot, because it is such a great Pokémon for beginners to use if they have the patience to evolve it. Also, for some serious bonus points, Magikarp had its own dedicated game in Magikarp Jump, but we won't hold that against anyone else. However, that is not the only Kanto Pokémon, and the ones that are here may surprise you. It's not the annoying, overexposed ones that you might think, like Geodude or Tentacool because they skipped out on the Unova region, but instead we have Magnemite. I had no clue that this little Electro Magnet was so common, but apparently the first ever Steel-type gets more publicity than I thought. Even if it's just one tucked away area that's hard to visit, Magnemite still takes the time to say hello to us in every game. We are once again saved by the White Forest, but it's there, it's programmed into the files, not locked away like some arbitrary mythical event. And you do have to breed for one from Magneton and X and Y, but they're actually out in the wild, it's not just a friend safari thing. So the evolution would count as well, all the way up to Legends Arceus and Paldea. Although sadly, Magnazone does not make the cut because its use of a Thunderstone wasn't implemented by Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and there is no area of sufficient magnetic disturbance to make it evolve. But Magnemite and Magneton deserve some serious respect for being there for us every single time, even when more popular electric types seem to be too busy doing anything else. In a similar boat, we have Rhyhorn showing up every time the doors are open. Maybe this is because Rhydon is the first ever Pokémon designed and they thought that should be commemorated in some way, but I did not expect this rugged Rhino to beat out other more prominent rock and ground types, even if some of them are narrow inclusions. And I kind of lied about Sinnoh being done earlier because their final form, Rhyperior, is carried over the finish line by having the Protector show up with Rhyhorn in each of the games after it's introduced. I kind of wish that we could get a new Rhino Pokémon one day, but if this spiky cross-gen family refuses to leave, then I doubt they'll ever bother with it. However, there is one more Pokémon line that is ever-present across the many decades of the series that you always know is there but maybe you don't realize, and that is everyone's favorite headache machine, Psyduck. While this mental mallard may not be the first thing that you think of when considering the most popular repeated Pokémon, it's also not surprising at all. You can picture a Psyduck in just about any region. 
Now, it is a version exclusive to Fire Red, but that's nothing compared to how easy it is to find one while surfing in Johto or in the Hoenn Safari Zone, or blocking your path in Sinnoh, and even Golduck was one of the more prominent past Pokémon in the wild in the first Unibug games, leading to Flockacy Ranch the next time, and of course all of the recent remakes. This one is also bolstered by it actually sort of lining up across outside media, with Psyduck not being a true mascot per se, but also appearing frequently enough with the big boys to display its trademark brand of confusion and lovable dopiness. While not ever the centerpiece, it's never out of place to see a Psyduck in external materials, and the games reflect that in having Psyduck and Golduck every single time across the Game Boy all the way to the Switch. And yes, that includes Legends Arceus, and of course the Let's Go games as well. So maybe we've been giving the wrong yellow Gen 1 Pokémon the spotlight, since Psyduck is the constant soothing presence that you can always count on to see in your journey. So you might as well give in and catch one already. So, those are all of the Pokémon that have been in every single game since their introduction. This is not the list that I expected, but you can still make a decent team out of these options, and apparently, you can make it whenever you want. What's your favorite Pokémon with perfect attendance? Let me know down in the comments! Also, be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today! And until next time, stay grounded!